What is going on, guys? Welcome to the N1 Fitness Podcast. I'm your host, Marcus Sidhu, and today we're going to dig into weight loss plateaus. So do they exist? Are they real? Are they a thing? Absolutely. So first of all, we're going to get into why they happen. And then secondly, we are going to establish exactly how to avoid them and continue making progress. So push through them. Now, plateaus happen because as you lose weight, your maintenance calorie level intake, so basically the amount of calories that it takes to maintain your current body weight declines. So let's take an example of a 200 pound person, okay? Let's say their maintenance calorie intake is 3,000 calories to maintain that 200 pounds. So 3,000 calories per day maintains that 200 pound body weight. Their goal is fat loss, so they're gonna take that 3,000 calorie maintenance level and they're gonna reduce it to 2,700 to start getting the weight loss process rolling. Week one, let's say they drop four pounds. Week two, three, and four, they drop two pounds each week. And week five, they don't lose any weight. So they've presumably hit a weight loss plateau, meaning now that they're down that 10 pounds from 200 pounds to 190, their maintenance calorie intake dropped from 3,000 to 2,700 over the course of that time because they lost weight for the first four weeks on 2,700 calories, but now they're smaller, right? So their maintenance level intake reduced, which makes perfect sense because in general, smaller things use less fuel. So in this case, we're talking about the person. The person is smaller. They are going to burn less fuel at 190 pounds than they were at 200 pounds. So the fuel is calories in this case. The easiest way to think about this concept is via car. So an F-150 truck and a smart car, right? If they're going the same distance, let's say it's 100 kilometers or 62 miles, who's gonna burn more gas going that distance? It's obviously the F-150 truck. So the same concept applies to weight loss and why we hit plateaus. As we lose weight and get smaller, we use less fuel and therefore less calories to go about our day-to-day lives, just everyday things. Now, some folks will talk about metabolic adaptations as well, such as the actual metabolism ramping down, extracting more calories from the same food that we eat or the same amount, yada, yada, yada. Personally, I think all of that stuff is basically a wash, a waste of time to think about and can be explained via changes in day-to-day habits. And the way that I think about it is the same way that I think about aging and metabolism. A lot of folks like to believe that their metabolisms slow down a ton as they age. And the truth is that the metabolism only decreases by about one to 2% per decade, okay? So if you're eating 2000 calories per day to maintain your weight, that's a reduction of two to four calories per year. That's like a quarter of a slice of an apple. I mean, it's barely even detectable, arguably not detectable at all. So I think about these extremely minor metabolic adaptations, if they truly exist, as a wash. And I like to focus on what we can control versus what we can't control because what's the point in fixating on something that has a small effect, if at all, and we couldn't even control or change it if we wanted to, if it was a real phenomenon. So basically, that was my long-winded way of saying the reason why we hit plateaus isn't because of your metabolism doing anything out of the ordinary or something that we didn't expect it to do. It makes perfect sense that our maintenance calorie intake declines as we lose weight. Now, as a little aside note, if someone was okay with looking like a bit of a weirdo, you could probably avoid this decline in maintenance calorie intake via the weight loss process by simply wearing a weight vest and adding back all of the weight that you're losing while doing so. So for example, week one, you lost four pounds, you'd add four pounds to that weight vest. Week two, three, and four, you lost two pounds each. You'd add those two pound increments each week to that weight vest so that your body was holding or carrying all of that weight that you had previously lost throughout your day. And therefore, you could likely avoid this metabolic adaptation or just the the reduction in maintenance level calorie intake via that weight loss process itself. But is that practical? Is it realistic? Is it likely? 
absolutely not. No one's going to wear a weight vest underneath their suit to work. It's kind of ridiculous, right? But I think that the example helps to paint a picture of why and how plateaus happen and why maintenance calorie intake declines as we drop pounds. So now let's get to the good stuff, right? How do we avoid and bust through fat loss plateaus without looking like a weirdo wearing a weight vest? Essentially, all we've got to do is stay one step ahead of the plateau process via tracking and adjusting. So what do we need to track? We need to track three things, our calorie intake, our movement patterns, and our scale weight, okay? So if you choose not to track any one of these three things, or you track inaccurately, unfortunately you're screwed because you're working with either lack of information or inaccurate information. It's sort of like navigating a new city with the wrong directions. There's a slight chance that you stumble across what you were looking for in this new city, but it's highly, highly unlikely. So let's use our 200 pound person example from before. They were taking in 2,700 calories per day and they dropped 10 pounds over the course of the first four weeks. And then the fifth week, they maintained their weight. And let's say they were averaging 10,000 steps per day and they were keeping that super nice and consistent. They've got three options. One is to reduce their calories. The second is to increase their daily movement. And the third is to do both. Okay, but let's say that they'd like to go the calorie reduction route. So they drop their calorie intake by another 200. So now they're eating 2,500 calories per day. It's really important that while they adhere to that 2,500 calorie intake per day spot, that they keep their steps at 10,000 steps per day. Because if they were to drop their calories and then also reduce their movement to say 6,000 steps per day, they might actually cancel out the calorie reduction that they just created because yes, they'd be taking in less, but they'd also be burning less via less movement. So this is a really clear example of why consistency and tracking calorie intake, steps and body weight is so important because if you were tracking your calorie intake, but for some reason you stopped tracking your steps, but you assumed that you were still hitting 10,000 per day, but you were actually at 6,000, you'd be like, okay, what is going on here? We wanna take the ambiguity out of the equation, so you just make sure that you're tracking the big three. So let's say our example person implements the 2,500 calories per day for week six and keeps their steps at 10,000 steps per day and drops another 1.5 pounds that week, perfect. We just got the fat loss process rolling again and now they ride that calorie intake and movement quota out until their weight loss slows down or stops. Now once their weight loss stops or they hit another plateau, they just make another adjustment and so on down the line until they reach their goal. Now. To be honest, this is where having a good coach really helps because they know what to adjust and when. You can totally do this on your own. Don't think that you have to have a coach. It's just a lot easier with a coach because it's tougher to be objective with yourself and it's easy to get wrapped up in the day-to-day -day process versus having an objective outside eye. But again, if you're tracking this stuff accurately, you can do it on your own. But as you can see, there's nothing mysterious going on when your weight loss starts to slow and you hit a quote unquote plateau. You just need to track, assess, and adjust until you hit that target body weight that you're after. This is exactly what I do with my clients. This is the process that I take them through. But if you are doing this on your own, just make sure that you don't get trigger happy. Meaning if what you're doing is getting results, there's no need to change anything. For example, if you're losing two pounds every seven days, week after week after week, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, okay? Just ride that wave as long as you possibly can. Now, hypothetically, if you had a weight gain goal, the protocol would be identical, except exactly the opposite, so flipped on its head. As you started to maintain your weight, as you climbed, and reached your maintenance level intake, you would add calories versus take them away on the way down, or you would decrease movement versus increase movement on the way down, right? So this process works in both directions, and I think that's just helpful to understand as far as grasping this concept big picture. Now, having said that, you're probably not looking to gain weight, but hypothetically, if you were, that would be the process that you would take. It works in both directions, obviously. It's not just on the way down that you would have to adjust calories and your body adjusts to it. It's also on the way up. 
Now, if you know someone who's hit a weight loss plateau or they're having trouble losing weight, maybe they're gaining and losing the same number of pounds over and over over the course of months and years, share this podcast episode with them because they might be able to put these pieces together, follow the formula that I just laid out, that step-by-step process, and begin seeing results. If you're interested in applying for one-on-one nutritional coaching and or workout design with me, you can click the link in the description below or head on over to n1fitness.com forward slash coaching. Also follow me up on Instagram at n1fitness and friend me on Facebook at Marcus Sadu. Lastly, hit the subscribe button on whatever platform you're using. I hope you found this useful and I will catch you on the next one. See ya.